Hello everyone, uh, my name is Shakti Saurabh and uh, today I'm going to talk about a simulation based comparison of the performance between the two fuels which we studied uh, which are diesel and HVO or the hydro treated vegetable oil fuel. So before I begin talking about my presentation, let me just give a brief background of the company that I work for. So Cummins, which is headquartered in Columbus, Indiana, was founded more than 100 years ago in 1919. It's a global power leader of various business segments, uh, which include the engine business unit, uh, the components business unit, power systems uh, business units, and recently they have uh, started working on a new power business unit, which includes several uh, electrified power systems, hydrogen generation, and fuel cell products. I would also like to acknowledge uh, the several people who have contributed or guided during the, uh, the work of this project, uh, including Nicholas House and Tara Himami, who were the main uh, people who were involved in this work, and apart from that, my manager, Susan Perks, and people from other teams, including Frank Tao, Rob Dickinson, Milan Vasaria, Matthew Bingham, Ranjit V, Joe Reynolds, and Kevin Roggendorf from Gamma Technologies. So the content of the presentation will include, I'll give a brief uh, introduction of the, uh, the objective of the work as well as the HVO fuel itself. And then I'll go about talking into the test data that we used for calibrating the GT power models as well as for the validation of the performances between the two fuels. Uh, I'll talk about briefly on the modeling approach that we took and then go dive into the results of the uh, current work. And finally, I'll be summarizing the findings of our results. So let's start with the introduction first. So what is HVO fuel? So for people who have, uh, you're not aware of the fuel itself, it stands for hydro-treated vegetable oil. It is made through a two-stage process known as hydro-treatment, where feedstocks are saturated with hydrogen at high temperatures, like over 300 degrees Celsius, followed by a stage of isomerization and cracking to give the end product of the desired fuel qualities. So basically it's produced from uh, waste fats, residues and vegetables oils and it has a lot of benefits. Uh, some of the studies uh, that we have seen uh, have indicated several uh, improvement in different uh, emissions parameters such as hydrocarbon, uh, soot and uh, the NOx itself as you can see in one of the uh, papers published in SE technical papers. Uh, it also has a higher CT number, so it leads to you know efficient and clean combustion for the extra vehicle power that you can derive from it. It is also fully compatible with the existing fuel distribution infrastructure. So there is no need for an additional investment to cope up with the HVO fuel if it replaces diesel in the future. It is also something which you can blend with diesel in any ratio. So you could use 100% renewable diesel such as the fully HVO fuel or you can blend it in like 50% uh, HVO and 50% diesel and so on. It has a very good uh, stability and so it does not have uh, you know the struggles of oxidation so it can be stored over long periods. And the fuel is sulfur free, oxygen free and aromatics free. And uh, the one key benefit that you get with uh, less aromatics is that, you know, the soot agglomeration that happens and results in larger amount of soot in diesel is typically reduced in the HVO fuel. It is also suitable for very cold weather conditions. So why do we want to look at this fuel? So recently power generation, industrial and locomotive products in the US are considering the reduction in net carbon release of uh, this fuel to meet emission regulations. However, HVO is uh, still more expensive than diesel. As you can see, it's about two to three times more expensive. But this, some of the states are considering subsidizing this fuel, considering the uh, significant impact of reduction in emissions that it uh, provides. So the key question we want to demonstrate that uh, is it possible to use a simulation to actually predict the combustion and emission performances uh, using a GT model for both the fuels that is diesel and HVO such that we can avoid expensive experimental tests uh, to quantify the same differences between the two fuels. Uh, 